Good morning, folks. Welcome to Just Omer. My name is Omer Ahern, Jr., and I am the Grafton County Commissioner from District 3 here in Grafton County, New Hampshire. And this is my uh, periodic report to the people of Grafton County and beyond, and those of you that want to watch my report, uh, as to what's going on at the uh, Grafton County complex up in uh, North Haverhill, New Hampshire. Um, I am one of three county commissioners. I serve with um, Co County Commissioner Wendy Piper. Uh, she's the commissioner from District 1, which includes, or which is, or are the towns of Hanover, Lebanon, and Enfield. And then we also serve with Commissioner Martha McLeod, who serves the towns in northern and western Grafton County. Uh, and I serve the uh, communities, actually we, we all serve the entire county, but we're elected from those districts. So I'm elected from District 3, which includes the towns from um, Campton, uh, Warren, uh, to the north, and over to Groton and Dorchester, and then over to Canaan, um, and then uh, the southern part of the county, um, you know, Holderness, Bristol, um, and uh, not Enfield, uh, Bridgewater, and of course Plymouth, Hebron, and Holderness, and of course Wentworth. So uh, again, there, we are three commissioners, and by state statute, uh, which went into effect back in the 1870s, we are responsible for the operation and, and making sure that there is a uh, nursing home in Grafton County, a county house of correction and jail, and by the state statute uh, to uh, originally to uh, provide a, a farm uh, in order to feed the people in the nursing home and in the house of correction, the inmates, in the old days, they were called prisoners. Today, we call them residents uh, of the Department of Corrections to feed them and, of course, the staff and the uh, other employees uh, on the, on the, at the county complex. So up in North Haverhill, we have a 135-bed nursing home, uh, which is for uh, residents or people uh, from Grafton County, elderly or whoever, uh, and we have Medicaid residents, we have Medicare residents, we have a couple of beds for uh, Veterans Administration folks, and then of course we have the private pay. And uh, again, we have a 135 bed nursing home. However, due to the shortage of nursing staff, uh, we find that we are only able to uh, uh, provide uh, care to uh, under a hundred people and that's you know that's kind of tough for the families that need to have a place for their grandmother or their mom or dad or grandfather uh, to have a place to go uh, and receive the care that they need to receive in their in their elderly elderly years uh, so we have a 135 bed nursing home in Grafton County uh, we also have a 150 bed uh, multi-unit uh, uh, correctional facility. Units are called pods. Uh, the pods are for maximum uh, uh, corrections, uh, minimum. We have a female unit. We have intake units. Uh, and so that's a 150-bed facility that if the need arises, we, can, uh, we, have, we have extra beds and storage that we could actually house up to 300 uh, residents uh, in, our, in our Department of Corrections. And of course, we have uh, the farm. We are the last county in New Hampshire to still have an active working dairy farm. And we also grow vegetables, uh, hay for the cows and corn for the cows, and growing uh, pump, uh, pumpkins, winter squash, uh, sweet corn, and of course, potatoes. And hopefully this year we're going to be able to go back to growing uh, vegetables such as uh, other vegetables such as cucumbers, uh, summer squash, uh, and uh, beets and carrots and 
hopefully some uh, 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 Canadian purple top rutabagas. And the UNH Cooperative Extension folks up there are also going to be doing some sweet potato trials up there. I, I think Heather said there may be as many as 12 or 13 or 12 or 15 varieties of sweet potatoes that they're going to be growing up there at the Grafton County uh, complex to see how those, how, how those you know, uh, will work in, in this climate for our agricultural community. Uh, also up at the uh, county complex, besides the nursing home, the house of correction, the farm, uh, the county courthouse is also there. That's where the uh, Superior Court, County Superior Court, holds its cases. The uh, district court, or the, now the circuit court, holds its cases there. Uh, there is also uh, where the county attorney's office is located. The county commission, uh, the county sheriff's office, is located in the county courthouse, as well as some state agencies. Uh, uh, Department of uh, Motor Vehicles has a couple of some office space there. The state um, parole and probation department has uh, some office space there as well. So it's, it's a multi-purpose uh, facility up there in, in Grafton County. And uh, we, we employ quite a few people up there. Uh, when you add up every, all of the positions that we have, we have a little over 800 positions that we need to fill in the nursing home, in the house of correction and jail, and in the farm. And the last couple of years especially, it's been very difficult to find staffing for those positions. And that has created, as I said, the problem with trying to fill all the beds in the nursing home. And right now, as the commissioners are working on the county budget for the fiscal year that starts July 1st, um, we're, we're, you know, we're struggling with how are we going to meet all of the financial uh, requests for the staff. Uh, we're dealing with a couple of employee organizations uh, and uh, one of those organizations the commissioners met with uh, yesterday, April 18th, uh, at the commissioner's conference room uh, at the county complex up there in North Haverhill. And I'm going to be talking a little bit more about that meeting that we had yesterday afternoon, our regular meeting, usually at 9 o'clock on uh, Tuesday mornings, but because uh, one of the commissioners uh, had a uh, prior uh, commitment, uh, we decided that we would hold our meeting in the afternoon. So. Um, the big thing, one of the big issues right now is working on and establishing a, a, a county budget that ultimately needs to be approved, voted upon, you know, reviewed, and voted upon by the county delegation. Now, the county delegation is made up of all of the elected state representatives from within Grafton County. So the state representative that... Uh, represents your town or, you know, your town is in a district represented uh, by, uh, you know, a, a, a state representative. That person is going to be part of that uh, group of, uh, called the county delegation that will ultimately vote on that, on the county budget presented by the commissioners. But we haven't come up with a final budget yet to present to the county delegation. We're still working on that. We're in discussions with, as I said, uh, the two uh, organizations that represent the employees up at Grafton County. And again, we met with uh, yesterday morning was, our, excuse me, yesterday afternoon, the 18th, was our regular commissioner's meeting and uh, started at 2 o'clock. And all three county commissioners were present. And we start out always, every one of our meetings, we start out with the Pledge of Allegiance to our, uh, our republic. And the first item on the agenda was uh, Jim Oaks. He is the uh, maintenance department superintendent, and he uh, gave us his uh, monthly uh, report. And I've shown that report to you in the past. It's a very detailed report, and it's right here. Uh, it is one, th th you know, this report is made up of uh, five pages, and he talks about what's uh, he talks about the ARPA projects, the ARPA project updates, you know, the 
uh, American uh, restoration program. I think it's restoration. Uh, this is money that the county received from the federal government during the uh, pandemic time period. And the money was to be used for one-time purchases for major items uh, that, you know, normally, uh, normally could be purchased, but because of the pandemic, uh, there wasn't the money coming in to, to pay for some of these things. So one of the ARPA projects that, that the maintenance department is overseeing is uh, trying to put in uh, a, a water system with wells that are uh, located on Grafton County property uh, with the hope and the expectation uh, that we can, um, the county can get out from underneath Woodville Water and Light where at this point where the county is purchasing uh, water from Woodsville Water and Light uh, and that water that we're, you know, we're using up there and it's got to be processed, it's got to be chlorinated, uh, is coming from the Amanusik River. And we're trying to figure out a way, the commissioners are trying to figure out a way to come up with a uh, more safer water system. And as a result of that, the county does spend a lot of money every month purchasing bottled water. Uh, for the residents in the nursing home and uh, for the staff on the campus. So we've got one well that's been put in. There's a second well that has gone in, and we're now looking to see if that combination of those two wells would give us the water uh, flow that we need. Uh, we're uh, working on uh, paving, uh, going out to bid to do some paving up there. We've had, you know, there's, it's been quite a number of years since the parking areas up there have been paved and uh, because they haven't been paved there's a lot of potholes and that creates problems for you know keeping the parking lots up there for the employees and the family uh, that come up to visit their uh, residents you know their family residents at the nursing home so that's a project that's being worked on uh, we're, they, we're also working on a nursing home landscape project uh, the uh, residents in the nursing home, you know, they, they like to get out if, if they can, especially even in when the weather is cool, but especially in, you know, the warmer months, you know, of the spring, summer, and fall. And the residents really like to see the dairy cows and the little uh, heifers and uh, livestock that are actually located, you know, right behind the nursing home building. And they really like to see the cows. So, uh, Anyway, but this landscape project is also designed to uh, make the grounds of the uh, nursing home, the outside grounds, a little more enjoyable for, for the residents when they go out. Um, we are also uh, working on a couple of other uh, systems uh, and replacing certain things in the uh, uh, kitchen for the nursing home. Uh, things, you know, get old and they don't work as well and so they've got to be replaced if we're going to continue to be able to feed the uh, employees and to feed the residents in the nursing home in the house of correction. Uh, we're also uh, looking into doing a sewage, pu a sewage pump station uh, at the, at the uh, county complex again with an eye toward uh, trying to uh, uh, not rely anymore and purchase sewage uh, sewage uh, disposal from Woodsville Water and Light. Uh, in the nursing home, we're working on lighting issues, uh, the sprinkler system, uh, repairing some flooring that was put in a little while ago and it wasn't put in properly in some instances. And so that particular provider has been coming back and at no extra cost to the county making those repairs. Uh, in the administration building, um, they're uh, doing some work in the attic and uh, in the deeds building they're working on enhancing the security and to facilitate egress from all of the uh, Register of Deeds offices uh, and then working on the fire alarm system down there because uh, you know that's a that's a big interior complex up there the nursing home 
register of deeds. Also, the county attorney has some offices there. Of course, the county commissioner office is there. And so there's a lot of things we need to look after there. Um, then, of course, constant issues with the heating uh, and uh, uh, heat pump issues. So HVAC is a big issue that we're trying to deal with up there, not only in the nursing home, uh, but also in the uh, Department of Corrections. Um, oh, uh, yeah, air handlers at the Department of Corrections uh, and hydraulic uh, pumps at the Department of Corrections. So these are just issues that, you know, uh, you know we, the commissioners have to deal with because we have to make decisions whether we're going to, you know, repair sometimes or purchase new things. Uh, the, uh, the farm, there's <laughs> the, the maintenance department is working on making uh, some repairs to the north gutter cleaner uh, system uh, within the barns and then uh, working with the milk system pump uh, that was uh, leaking uh, recently. So they're working on that. Uh, we, have, we do have a biomass plant up there which produces the heat for uh, the administration building uh, and the county courthouse, but uh, it does not provide the heat for the new uh, House of Correction that, was, that went online in the year 2011 because the uh, biomass plant did not come online until a couple, four or five years later. So um, we, the, the, the boiler at the uh, biomass plant needs to be, uh, you know, cleaned and, and uh, you know, annual maintenance for, for that. That's another thing the maintenance department works on. Uh, so there's a number of other things. So Jim's, Mr. Oak's report is on the uh, county commissioner website with the minutes. Uh, for the meeting that he presented that at. We had a brief discussion with, well, no, it was a long discussion with the employee council uh, discussing uh, their uh, requests for uh, salary uh, increases in the upcoming budget. And the county commissioners had uh, proposed uh, a, a, some increases and some other things uh, in order to meet um, what the commissioners felt were the needs of our uh, county employees and uh, the uh, employee council, you know, would like to talk a little bit more about that. So uh, that's going to be a continuing issue to, to work on and we'll be talking about that and you will see ultimately how that uh, discussion turns out after July 1st when the new budget goes into, goes into effect. Uh, the next item on the agenda, uh, number four, was uh, Ann Duncan Cooley, the uh, administrator for the uh, Grafton County, um, oh, Grafton County, uh, the Grafton Regional Development Corporation. We have, we have a lot of uh, uh, letters up there that we have to remember the names for. So she uh, gives us a monthly report as well that... The uh, Grafton Regional Development Corporation is one of those nonprofits that the county commissioners uh, a number of years ago decided to help fund in order for this type of an organization to help other businesses within Grafton County. So um, she, uh, you know, her, her, her uh, Grafton Regional Development Corporation works with uh, nonprofits and with small businesses and the reports that she provides are indicating that they're doing uh, a lot of uh, helping to achieve a lot of success uh, for the small businesses in, in Grafton County. Uh, this is a report that went out on um, April 7th to uh, people that are on the Grafton Regional Development Corporation's uh, email list and uh, one of the things that uh, that uh, publication talks about is the, um, the money that the Grafton County Commissioners and the Grafton County Execu Executive Committee have authorized uh, in the uh, Pandemic Emergency Relief Funding, also known as ARPA. And so there's $500,000 that's going to be uh, available to make 
grants uh, anywhere from $1,000 to $20,000 to help uh, these economic uh, entities, businesses, to uh, reopen or recover from negative economic impacts linked to the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, so this, this is good to get this information out. So take a look at this report from the Grafton Regional Development Corporation. And again, we appreciate the good work that Ann Duncan Cooley does uh, with, with those folks. Uh, the next item on the agenda uh, was uh, Jeff Stiegler, the High Sheriff of uh, Grafton County. And uh, he gave his uh, report for the month of March. And, uh, you know, he reports on the different um, activities that the criminal, Divi criminal division of the Sheriff's Department uh, uh, is involved in, uh, the number of uh, uh, arrests that they make and other things that they do. Um, in March, they had one uh, arrest for a narcotic offense, two arrests for possession of child sexual abuse images. Uh, they had 23 requests to assist other agencies. Um, they did uh, five investigative search warrants. Um, they did, uh, they, they uh, served a grand jury investigative subpoena. Uh, they did uh, serve, or they did serve an indictment on um, an assault on a um, law enforcement officer. Um, they had, um, they made some presentations on uh, internet safety, 22 of those within the community. And uh, so this is a report, this report is also uh, online uh, with the county commissioner's uh, minutes. And they also have a second page of statistics uh, they had uh, 39 uh, court transports. Uh, they had uh, 22 CSO movements from jail to court. And <clears throat> they had uh, in nine involuntary ad emergency admissions. They had 27 total arrests. I mentioned some of them here. Uh, they had uh, 175 total monthly civil services. That might be for... Uh, serving papers in a lawsuit, in, you know, uh, when in, in the civil uh, judicial system, uh, when a plaintiff has to serve a defendant with, uh, you know, a summons or a uh, cause of action. And the uh, total number of uh, active warrants that haven't yet been served, 385 criminal warrants and 20 civil warrants. They did make uh, 15 motor, uh, 13 motor vehicle stops and total miles driven by the Sheriff's Department in the month of March was 22,315, which is down 7,000 miles uh, from what they usually uh, are, are uh, driving in the course of a month. Um, we also had uh, Ben White, the interim farm manager, come in uh, next, and he uh, made a uh, request to the commissioners to go ahead with his purchase of a, um, uh, a mixer wagon for the, for the dairy farm to mix the uh, feed, the grain, and, and other, uh, for lack of a better word, additives uh, to help the cows as they uh, try to give, give more milk. We have reduced, of course, as I think I've mentioned, the number of dairy cows that are being milked at the county uh, complex uh, from about 85 to 88 cows. We're now down to about 55 to 58 cows uh, because we didn't, just didn't have enough labor, didn't have enough employees in the farm. So we've hired a new farm employee, but uh, the commissioners did approve uh, the purchase of the um, mixer wagon. Again, that's, that's going to be purchased with ARPA funds. Um, so that is a quick rundown of um, what we do uh, as county commissioners. Um, so yeah, some of it may sound boring, but it is all something that is you know, essential to the operation of the 135 bed nursing home. You know, we're dealing not only with uh, registered nurses, but licensed uh, uh, nurses, uh, 
certified licensed nurses, uh, nurses aides, uh, maintenance uh, people that go in and do the cleaning of the rooms and the hallways, dietary, we got to make sure we have the cooks and the people that uh, wash the dishes. Uh, that's all very, very important. Uh, of course, the maintenance department, we have people that are constantly uh, looking to make sure the buildings are all uh, in safe and, and uh, appropriate condition, that all of the HVAC things and uh, air conditioners are working properly. We have a uh, information technology department there uh, that, you know, because everybody's using computers. Uh, and uh, so, and of course, uh, there's the county attorneys, attorneys that are up there, and, and uh, Marcy Hornick uh, is the county attorney, and she has um, some openings there if people, uh, for, for a new attorney, another attorney. Uh, and so there's just a great need uh, to, for the number of buildings that we have up there, the square footage that we have up there. You know, we have the alternative sentencing building, which used to be the what we call the old commissioner's uh, uh, office building. And, of course, we're getting ready to do a timber cut. We also, uh, and that's going to be monitored by the county uh, forester, uh, Jim Frohn, who is uh, employed by the UNH Cooperative Extension. And we have, we have an office up there for the U, uh, University of New Hampshire Cooperative Extension folks. We have vegetable experts, food safety experts, 4-H uh, people are there, and so that's quite an extensive program. Uh, and if you, if those of you that own woodlands and you would like to have uh, the county forester come and look at what you've got there, and as you maybe uh, consider doing a timber cut, Jim is willing to come out and take a look at what you've got. He's a busy man, but certainly make a call to Jim, and he would be certainly very willing to, to talk with you. Um, again, the big issue right now is the county budget. And, you know, there are still requests being made for, um, you know, expensive pieces of equipment that weren't purchased uh, under the ARPA program. So the county commission has got to make some, some hard decisions. And um, please go and look at the uh, county website, take a look at the county commissioner minutes. Um, you're going to see, you know, the concerns that the county commissioners have uh, with regard to the money that's being spent. We have an obligation to you, the taxpayers, to be, you know, uh, judicious uh, in the use of your money. But we also have an obligation to provide the very best care for the residents in our nursing home and to you know tr do the best we can to provide a fair and reasonable compensation system for our employees uh, one of the things that you know we really uh, uh, have uh, what i feel is a, a good system is our retirement system the benefits that grafton county offers to its employees are absolutely outstanding and uh, retirement and vacation and days off and things like that. So if you, you know, take a look at the um, human resources part of the county uh, uh, website and you'll see the jobs that are, are open. Um, I believe, I believe the House of Correction is uh, again looking for a uh, chef, a cook to work in there. Um, and... Um, so take a look, and you'll see all that information. I, I just want to also let you know that um, I do enjoy working with Commissioner Piper from District 1 and working with uh, Commissioner McLeod from District 2. Uh, you know, we have to kind of work together to, as being in the best interest of all concerned, especially for the taxpayers of, of Grafton County. So... I, this may be a little bit of a shorter report, but I want to also thank the folks here at uh, PBTV for allowing me this opportunity to make this information available to you. Uh, if you want to talk with me, contact me, uh, talk with me. My phone number in Wentworth is 603-764-6024, and my email is 
O-M-E-R dot A-H-E-R-N dot J-R at gmail.com. And if I'm not in my office and you call my office, just leave a message if I'm not there. I've got, I, do have a, I do have voicemail. And uh, certainly, you know, send me uh, an email and I try to get back to those as quickly as I can. Again, one more time, I want to thank the folks at uh, PBTV. I want to thank uh, Commissioner Piper and Commissioner McLeod. God bless the great state of uh, New Hampshire, the Granite State, and God bless America. Thank you and take care.